Welcome to the Beyond Jiu-Jitsu Podcast. I'm your co-host, Kieran Lefebvre, joined by black belt superstar, world-renowned Adam Childs. (laughs) Boo. (laughs) The crowd goes wild with boos, boo. Hey, Kieran, what is up? We are here for episode 147 of the Beyond Jiu-Jitsu Podcast, where we are just helping out with a few little tips of five things to improve your jiu-jitsu is what we're talking about today. But mm-hmm. as always, before we actually talk about the topic, <laughs> let's have our 20 minute intro. Uh, um, that reminds me, did you see the comments on YouTube on our latest episode? I I mean, I didn't get a chance just, to talk I'll- to you about it off, okay. uh, off air, like off recording, but I read them and, and I was going to say to you like, we did have, there were a few comments that it's not like I wanted to address them, but there were a couple of things that people commented that I was like, I was like, <laughs> Let's oh, address them. that I was like, really? <laughs> but there was one, I think you're about to refer to the one that was like, it sounds that someone just commented. It sounds like they're talking about nothing, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> and you were like, welcome. And you were like, welcome to the show. I yeah. think they deleted their, uh, oh, no, no, no. Here, here it is. It's, uh, it feels like they are talking about nothing. <laughs> I'm like, welcome to the show. Yeah, and then Alex, exactly. shout out to Alex, long time listener. Uh he he goes, This is one of the most this is one of the more talk about something episodes, laughing face. Implying yeah, that I mean, uh, we don't talk about anything. <laughs> <laughs> I actually thought we um you know, some of the other comments were like, Oh, great debate, you know, or you know, mm. debate's probably a strong word. It was a, you know, conversation about opposing Full opinions, blown arguments. But um but yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I read that comment. But I was like, sounds like we're talking about nothing. Like, I mean, there are episodes where we really talk about nothing. I felt like we were, go- we were quite legitimately going back and forth about a particular topic. But um, yeah. Do you remember what episode was it where we had to title like "Don't listen to this episode" because it was dog no, shit? I think, I think it, it was like- that, it was episode like fifty or something. I think yeah. it was where yeah. we were like, yeah, like, you know, cause back at episode 50, we didn't know. Yes. It was 50. Good memory. Do ex- not listen to this episode. Yeah. We didn't know what to expect. So, you know, at the time it was a little bit like of a like, Oh shit, bro, we've done 50 episodes. Like that's cool. And it mm. was just a, a, not a piss taking episode, but we just kind of like sat down and were like, fuck sick. We did 50 episodes like, you know, blah, blah, blah. Mm. And yeah, we, it was, we didn't, didn't talk about much jujitsu related. Uh, but yeah, there was a comment that, um, for, for anyone who didn't listen to the last episode, Kira and I were kind of the, it was talking about essentially injuries in jujitsu and giving up jujitsu. And, um, I, like, it's not like Kieran and I disagreed with each other. Like every point that Kieran made, I agree, but I was, you know, then had like a little asterisk, a little bit of a, mm. like, yeah, I agree. But, and then it was the same. Everything I said, Kieran was like, I agree, but you know, there was, yeah. you know, that was kind of the episode. Um, but one comment that stuck it stood out was, uh, that said, I 100% agree with Kieran, which is not the thing that stood out. I'm like, for sure. Kieran's got heaps of great information, but then it said for every one rolling slash sparring, or like, essentially I read that as for every one hard jujitsu session I do, I do two to three strength and mobility sessions. And, um, mm-hmm. and I, that stuck out to me cause I was like, I mean, <laughs> like i mean that's all well and good but i was kind of like man you've only got so even if you live a yeah to go to the extreme an arnold schwarzenegger a david goggins or whatever lifestyle there's only so much time in the day and i'm like Mm. i'm like that ratio is whack like if that's your ratio for the amount you only have so much you can output even if time isn't a factor your body can only do so much in a set given time right? Without the use of some magical injectable formulas. Um, there's only so much you can do. And I was like, man, like if that's your split, you know, three S and C to one jujitsu, that's all well and good. And maybe you will have a long and prosperous, uh, life of doing jujitsu, <laughs> but you are not going to like get very good at jujitsu. And so I kind of read that as a bit like, just like, to clarify here adds, um, it's do three strength or mobility slash mobility. So yeah. and if, if one of those is strength, if it's a one for one ratio for strength to jujitsu, I'd be questioning it as well. My, my preferred ratio would be an inverse of that. So for every three jujitsu you're doing, you're doing one uh, strength or mobility session. Mm. 
but but anyway, like I mean, obviously it's uh, I'm just nitpicking here because that's mm. it's not like that comment laid out his entire you know workout yeah. Yeah, yeah, regime. Yeah. So I'm I may be completely blowing that out, out of context, but it did make me start thinking about you know. Obviously, for everyone, it's slightly different, but I did start to think, I wonder what the magical ratio is, you know, because you, you know, like you can't do it all. And I'm sure you've been in this position already, Kieran, even knowing what you know and coming from the background you come from is in strength and conditioning and PT and nutrition, which all that you had with you when you came to jujitsu, mm. um, I'm sh- I I would put my life on it that there's times where you've um, known that perhaps you should have done some strength, some conditioning, some mobility, or whatever, but you chose to go to jujitsu because at that moment you valued the opportunity to get better at jujitsu as more important than you know doing the alternative and obviously yeah. you know then the counter argument is like well you know if your body's fucked and you can't train jujitsu then i mean then what's the point point? and yeah so so which is true as well but it made me think like what's the you know what is the golden ratio because you can't have it all there'd be bodybuilders who are like well i want bigger traps back quads i, I mean they want but mm. there's only so you have to pick right you can't do mm. it all and so yeah I kind of then was like, oh, I wonder what the magical number is for the average person as to, you know, where you're not giving up too much opportunities to progress at jiu-jitsu, but you're also not sacrificing too much. Well, you, you know, you're going to put yourself into a situation where you can't do it anymore anyway. So, mm. anyway. yeah, I've been in that situation. Like when I first started, I was, when I first started training jiu-jitsu, I was going like, if you remember, like 10 times a week. And I maintained that for years, really, like for two years straight almost. Like, uh, Bar- barring injuries and, and whatever else. It was like you know, consistently 8 to 12 in that range uh, per week. And there was a period where I was trying to lift every, like my, my normal lifting schedule. I was trying to go to the gym on top of that five days a week. That's an insane amount of sessions. Like yeah. 17 sessions per week. Uh, and I was doing mobility on top of that. I was like working out during my lunch break at because uh, I was still yeah, in the Navy at, at that at, point. At the time when you started, you still had a full-time job. Yeah, like a was regular full-time Navy, yeah. Sort of, yeah, yeah like working 40 hour, five, 40 hour, yeah, 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 yeah. 40 hour plus weeks and still doing 17 sessions on top of that and everything else in between. And man, I, I did not maintain that for very long. I And I rebounded yeah. and went uh, the total opposite way and stopped doing any strength and conditioning. And then I ran into other issues on top of that. So not to turn this episode about strength and conditioning and everything, but I think what I what I normally recommend people recommend people do if you're training less than uh, four sessions of jujitsu per week, and whether that's voluntary um, or maybe your gym doesn't offer it or whatever, just like if you're under four sessions per week, then I uh, you know you can get away with doing three up to three strength and conditioning sometimes four depending on the individual but if you're doing around like six sessions of jiu-jitsu per week i would max out at two strength and conditioning yeah and yeah and because it also like yeah i would agree and um because i was the same when i when i was you know living in brazil and training and competing i would do like um i would do i think I would pretty consistently do about nine jujitsu sessions a week, mm-hmm. five of which were were like super hard, like the competition comp training. training, like comp yeah. training. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I'm excluding drilling in my own time. If I added that, mm. if I added drilling in too, we're probably up to like 15 jujitsu sessions a week. And then I would do on top of that, like two strength and conditionings a week. And mm. like, that was so much already. Like yeah. it was just so much, physical activity and i had a job right like i yep. mean a fit a job in there too and I, and even if you don't have a job i don't know like that's already a lot on the body without taking yeah. some sort of supplements to you know allow you yeah. to do more if, if you know what i mean but yeah. yeah anyway that just it just made me think about i wonder what the you know the magic number is for that balance but i guess it also depends what you want out of it like you know we've had this conversation before we got heaps of backlash in an earlier episode when we said something along the lines of like, man, if, if you only train twice a week, every week, like, I mean, 
unfortunately, you're never really going to get that good at jujitsu, right? Mm. And then we got. I wouldn't say we got heaps of backlash. Oh, it was just we a couple still get of, backlash. We still get I mean, backlash. From, from some strong individuals. But I mean, <laughs> yeah, I think anyone who has ever trained or competed seriously at a, prof- not even at a professional level, like even it might just be at a high level nationally, you know, find me someone who is podiuming at world who has only ever trained twice. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you know this, Ads, but I clipped that and put it on my YouTube channel, that segment, that 10 minute and 30. Yeah, yeah, I clipped it. No, I didn't. And it's got 8,000 views, and I get comments on it consistently. Oh, really? um, Yeah. (laughs) I I was just reading one this morning that uh, someone commented yesterday, and it's like, bad advice. This depends on the person or the goal. This is bad advice. Like, uh, yeah, it's. I mean, mean, that that is not super incorrect. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's. It d- does depend on the goal, right? But yeah, yeah. it's um, yeah. You know, you're not reaching the elite of anything, let alone like jujitsu, business, like mm. uh, fucking gymnastics. I don't care what it is, like you, whatever field. I mean, it could be yeah, even something we were talking about chess last episode. It could be chess. Like you ain't ch- chances of you becoming a GM in chess if you only ever play chess like twice a week like it's it's like it's not happening bro you gotta play you know? eight hours a day bro you know like but anyway um all right <laughs> wait no i have some, we didn't even get to the question i wanted to ask talking about in the introduction so i did just want to quickly ask because it's geographically relevant to both you and i um you know at the time of if people listen to this episode when it comes out we're probably a week after the Women's World Cup just finished, the Football mm. World Cup. I'm not personally a football fan, but here in Australia, like, you know, the country, if you will, got, like, super behind it because the, the the team here is called the Matildas. The Matildas did um, really well and, you know, made it to to playing Sweden for the bronze medal, um, which, which Australia lost and Sweden won. But I was just curious, like, if it was... I mean, a big deal in Sweden, or I mean, I guess in Australia, Man, it was a there big were riots deal in the of- streets. <laughs> like people were flipping cars. <laughs> Stockholm got shut down. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm totally kidding. Like uh, you didn't people even know watched- it was on, did you? No, no, no people like, watched it. No, I watched. I watched a lot of the games. Well, when I say I watched a lot of the games, I saw them on the TV and like looked at it for ten minutes and then walked away because um, mm. I, I, I don't really. I'm not a football fan either. Yeah, neither. Not a football. I don't follow football at all. Uh, But I did. I didn't even watch the bronze match game. I watched the part of the the quarters or so. I don't know. I've I've seen a a little bit. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's sort of a big deal. But I don't know how to say. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, right. No, it's just curious. Like I, I don't really care either. I mean, I know a lot of people do care, but it's just, it's just not a, it's not a sport I follow. Um, no. regardless of whether it's whatever you, you know, can no. f- women's football, men's football, like the champions league, the, uh, like, I don't care. I don't watch football at all, but, yeah. um, anyway, let's, <laughs> let's get into it. So yeah. So five tips to improve your jujitsu. So mm-hmm. I again, didn't share these tips with Kieran prior to the episode, not because they're a secret, but I just thought there's a chance that a few of mine, he have, he's got similar. And the reality is like you could list a hundred things that would help your jujitsu, right? But these are just five things that I think are uh, important if you're not already doing them. I think right? I know you so well that I'd be able to guess your entire five. All right, let's go. That's maybe a better way. I mean, I've, okay. Yeah, let's let, go. Let me we'll, let me guess one, and then and then you will tell me if it's on your list, and then we can go in and talk about okay, it. Okay, and we'll do that go. one at a time, and then we'll see how many I get wrong, or if, okay. if ever I run right. into something that's not on your list. All right. <laughs> okay. Good. Yes. <laughs> okay. I mean, I can definitely guess one of yours, but yes, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I know you can. <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about, and it is on there, you bastard. <laughs> uh, okay. Um. All right, so one, I'm going to go with a safe bet first of all. I'm going to go with intentional training. Yeah, 100%. And I would say that's probably on yours as well. It is. Um, yeah, so anyway, that I had ranked mine in order, but yeah, let's go over that first. So um, 
so de- deliberate training, right? Mm. This is also linked to episode 145, which was the first uh, edition of a reoccurring segment we do every 10 episodes where Kieran and I reflect back on the deliberate training we've been doing over the last uh, 10 weeks, two months, three months, however you want to split your time. But what we mean by deliberate training is, and I'm going to give the same analogy I always do because I think it perfectly describes the way people approach jiu-jitsu opposed to having deliberate training. It just means focusing, specifically focusing on a set uh, position, area, technique of your jiu-jitsu that you're trying to improve upon. And uh, I usually split that up into three-month blocks Mm -hmm. Uh, because most – like just because it's like it's a nice, easy number that at the end of the year you can look back and, you know – find someone who has been training for a few years, say five plus years and say, what, what have you improved in your jujitsu over the last year? And they, they probably won't even be able to tell you anything. Why? Cause they don't train de- deliberately. They do the equivalent. And here's the analogy of someone walking into a gym, gym, right? Like a weights gym and just being like, well, fucking a few bicep curls, I guess, and go run on that treadmill and then I'll, do a couple of squats and, you know, at a bare minimum, someone walking into the gym, they might not be following a, a, a professionally written program or whatever, but they'll go in being like, I'm doing, you know, like chest and triceps today or something. They at least know what they're focusing on at a minimum, mm. right? And you should be doing that with your jiu-jitsu as well. The reason I say break it up into three-month blocks is because, you know, for the average person – who might get bored like doing a bigger block. For example, Gordon Ryan does six month blocks. He said with his, with his deliberate training where uh, at the end of the six months, he looks back and if he's made gains, so to speak, he'll be like almost tick that off and move on to something else. Or if he hasn't, he'll be like, okay, something was wrong in that six months and adjust it and move on to the next six month block. You know, I think for a lot of people, they might get bored if they were just working on, you know, I can Delaheva for six months or whatnot. So three months is a good thing. And then imagine if at the end of the year you could look back and say, man, I've gotten better at Delaheva, passing half guard, retaining mount, and, you know, finishing from the back. Most people can't tell you one thing they've gotten better at uh, in the la- the last year of their jiu-jitsu. Yeah, I agree. And it's changed, it's changed my perspective and approach on jiu-jitsu a long time ago. And it definitely... It, it helps a lot. I've actually seen, there's this guy that I train with in here in Sweden. His name's Martin. And he brings a fucking list of moves that he wants to hit that, that session. A little bit different to what we're talking about because we're talking about like going deep into something. Like picking a position like you recently came off a three-month block of Choi Bar and we, we, you did an episode on it. And uh, I've been working on like specific guards um but martin what he does is he prints out a a list like a checklist of all the moves that he wants to hit and then once he like does a move that training session he moves on to something else on his list and there's like it's like 20 different fucking moves you just gave me a great idea for uh um whether you want to call it a a drinking game or it could be a little game that you play at a a grading slash some sort of special event you have at at your gym where whether you're watching live roles in your gym or you guys are watching ADCC or whatever and you're having like a watch party with your team and students and, you know, um, and you essentially play it like bingo and you have like you have like a set of moves and whatever and like you know as the hits up, the arm bar gets hit you're like yep tickle you know bingo <laughs> you know what that could be what about what about if you take that same idea and you have two people competing right rolling two two people rolling you get two blue belts right and you show them a bingo board just before the roll and have it like in printed out and have it massive so they can see it while they're rolling and whoever gets a bingo, like four in a row, wins the role. Yeah, that's a good one. That reminds me, were you at the gym that time where we pulled out the Jugo cards? Were you there no. that time? So <laughs> no. so what we did, we did this for a bit of a novelty. So 
Jugo is like a, a jiu-jitsu card game that um, a friend made, JT made. Um, that Yeah, it's like a, a jiu-jitsu card game. Anyway. It's, it's I had pretty a, awesome. Yeah, I had a deck at the gym and a lot of the cards are, are moves, are jiu-jitsu moves. Mm. So what I did is just for a fun and novelty thing, perhaps it was a Friday class or perhaps it was end of the year. I can't remember. It was just a novelty class. And what I did is I was like, I pulled out all the submission cards from the deck and then just, you know, shuffled them and had all the students choose a card that they, you know, blindly and they couldn't show it to anyone. And I said, whatever submission you, you got, if you manage to hit that on your partner, right, they've got to do 20 burpees or something. <laughs> Right. So then, you know, you went into the role trying to like hunt a particular submission that, you know, your opponent didn't know you were trying to hunt it, but they were also <laughs> trying to hunt a particular submission that if you got caught in, you were going to have to do, you know, and it was quite fun. It was like everyone enjoyed it for a bit of a, you know, oh, that's awesome. That's cool. Yeah, it was, it was quite fun, you know, but like if you got something shit, you were like, the fuck, you know, <laughs> like I'm never going to hit, you know, I'm never going to hit uh, that or whatever. Uh, but yeah, it was yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, but yes. Deliberate training, I mean, bring a list in, make a bingo board, whatever mm. it is. You definitely have to have intention. And I think it's 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 harder when you're a lower belt mm. because when you're, you're just in, trying to survive, man. Yeah, but also even just mentally and enjoyment wise, it's harder. So what I mean mm. is, for example, I'm in a position that if I choose something I want to work on deliberately, and let's say yeah, I'm doing three month blocks and I get one or two weeks in and I'm like, man, fuck this shit. Like this is <laughs> not, this is not complimentary to my game and what I already do and whatnot. Like I might throw in the towel and move to something else. But when you're lower, a lower belt, like if let's say, let's go that stereotypical when you're new to jujitsu, you're often told to, you know, just get on top, stay on top. Cause for a lot of people, it's harder to develop a guard. It's less mm -hmm. intuitive and whatever, but you get to a point where it's like, dude, like you have to learn a guard. Like you don't have to become a guard player, but even the best passers in the world who never ever pull guard in competitions still have a guard, right? Like, you know, and so it can be a bit, and then let's say if you're that white belt, blue belt, purple, whatever it is, and you're like, okay, I'm going to work on guard. And you could not be enjoying your training because you're just not having, you're not only are you getting smashed, which might not bother you, but you just might not be having fun, mm. you know? And at the end of the day, we do jujitsu because it's fun, right? Um, you might not be having fun, but you have to persist because you have to, like, it's such an important skill. Like, you, you have to improve upon it to some degree. Mm. Whereas when you get to my position, I can be trying, yeah, whatever it is, like, you know, lasso guard and be like, man, this doesn't, this doesn't complement my current, you know, game at all. And it's hurting my knee and fuck this. Like, I'm, you know, I'm going to do something different. That's really interesting. That reminds me of, I, I was just thinking back about how I did my note taking and my deliberate training when, when I really like honed, honed in on it during like probably six months in after my first, I think after my first comp, I really started to dial it in. So about, about that three, three to six month range. Anyway, when I was, you know, a six month white belt, my deliberate training was dictated by my training partners. Meaning what I, what I would focus on is the things that were being imposed on me. Like uh, I'll give yeah, you an example. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Like I, mean, I, I, I would keep getting caught in like I, I couldn't escape uh, bottom mount, for example, which is still my worst position by far. But like, just whatever. And then I would go home and be like, "Fuck, I can't get out of mount." Like, what the fuck? And then I would like focus on it and make it a strength. I would really, really focus in and be like, "I am not going to get mounted," or "I am, I'm not going to be held down in mount." Or maybe I was always getting my back taken, or I, I kept getting bow and arrow choked at one point by uh, a couple of the guys. Uh, Dan and Jake actually would yeah, always orange. fucking <laughs> bow and arrow choke me. And then uh, <laughs> I don't know if I've ever told this. Uh, fast forward when I was like, you know, blue belt, being a blue belt for a while, every time I'd roll with them, I would always try and hit a bow and arrow. Oh, really? <laughs> Because I remembered way back as a white belt, <laughs> feeling helpless, getting bow and arrow. And I was like, you, 
<laughs> but I, oh. but, you, but you know what? I think that still kind of stands. I think mm. even even at, at black belt, like the only reason that I probably don't nowadays train in that sort of way is because you know not because I'm unbeatable. Obviously, fucking not. It's just that I you know I don't have you know. 20 year old active black belt competitors walking through the gym or well, not even black belt, yeah. like brown belt, purple belt, blue belt. Like yeah, I don't yeah. have, I don't have, you know, world champion guys. I used to train with world champion competitors of all belt yep. levels every day, yep. you know, and I don't, there's still, there's plenty of people who don't have to be a world champion to put smack on me, but I, I don't, you, I, know access, I don't have access to that training every day mm. or, you know, Whereas mm. it used to be every role. So it was very easy then to be like, exactly. well, this is where I'm shit because I rolled with, over this week, I've rolled with 20 different people who all have 20 different games and styles. But there seems to be some sort of like consensus that this is where I suck. Exactly. And I need to get better at it. You know, exactly. um, if I went back through my notebook, you, you would be able to see that trend. Like it, I would be all through my notebook, like fucking this happen again. Or mate, fucking hit this move. Or I, I got submitted this way four times in one session. Yeah. That is obviously th- a clear indicator. I think the only difference would be that if I went, if I moved back to my gym in Brazil today, and then I would be put back into a situation where I could program my deliberate training around that structure. I think the only difference today is that I would have the option to rather than just go, oh, I need to fix a fucking bottom half guard, for example. Oh, I need to fix this. I would have the luxury of going, I can choose to work on fixing that or I can choose on developing techniques, strategies, whatever, to make sure I don't end up there and feed into one of my stronger positions. But when you're lower down, you perhaps don't have you know, assets that you can kind of move around and reallocate. You kind of just, mm. nothing you have is super valuable yet. So you're yeah. just trying to fix shit, trying to plug a bunch of holes. But yeah. yeah. Anyway, you are 100% correct. One of mine is deliberate training. So okay. tip two, what do you think? What do you think you got for me? I don't want to, I'm, I'm like being really careful because I have mine and I, I know you. So I want to make sure I like get the easy ones first. Now, <laughs> be impressive if you went five for five. That would be amazing. I want I mean, to we're say one for five at the moment. But yeah, this is I'm, I'm probably going to fuck it up. This one, I want to say that one of yours of tips for improving jujitsu is taking notes. No, it's not on my list, <sighs> but it is. But it is a great. But it is a great tip. It is a great tip. I was I was not sure about that one because we had deliberate training and I thought maybe you were like, no, nah, I won't do two that are similar. Well, yeah. I mean, it's funny though, right? Because there's... I can't believe I failed than, it there's, too. <laughs> there's way more than five tips to improve your jiu-jitsu. Okay. Note-taking is... I think note-taking is super, super valuable. Um, and I used, to, I used to do it. Didn't I one day bring in my old notebooks you to did. show you? Yeah. I remember. I went, actually, I think... I went over it. Yeah, maybe in a box... I remember. I, I remember I hope thinking. I still have them. Not that I would ever I, look at them again, but the first page I opened up on your notebook, and this is when we like when I first started. <laughs> it was a picture of it your was, penis. I was really, yeah, it was, out, but I persisted. <laughs> <laughs> and then right next to it was a photo. No, I won't say that. Uh, <laughs> don't worry. Uh, but no, I actually I opened up, and then you had written out like a two-page, uh, you know, thing on. It was essentially a speech that Fabio gave. And you, you, you fully wrote it out. Um, and I remember reading it and like, I was like, holy fuck, that, that is pretty profound shit. And I brought this up before. And then you're like, was it just was like it? a no, was it just like a knowledge bomb or something? Yeah, it was just a knowledge bomb. And honestly, I can't remember what it was, but I, I brought this up on the podcast before and I, and I was telling a story like, oh, it's super pr- profound. And you're like, what was it? I'm like, I don't remember. And you're like, well, wasn't that fucking profound then? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Hang on. I'm going to, I'm going to make a little note <laughs> actually. <bastard>. Um, <laughs> I'm going to make a little note to find my notebooks, which, mm. I mean, I know I never threw them out, but like... No, 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 you have where, but, but where they are, I'm not quite sure. And it's one of those things that I would never throw out, but it's also no. something I'll probably never look at again because, yeah. I mean... But I've made a little note here to try find my notebooks and then perhaps next episode, 
We'll just be reading if, them from start to yeah, <laughs> cover to cover. Yeah, yeah. This is yeah. an audio book. No, but I'll see if I can find the 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 notebook that has uh, some sort of two page Fabio quote in the front. Right. Okay, well, I have to, and, I have and to imagine try and guess. If it, and it's just like something lame, like be on time, <laughs> tie belt. And Kieran's like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so, so wait, hang on, wait. But was note taking on your list or no? Yes. Okay, yeah. so yeah. But, but it was yeah, okay, like so, clumped together with intentional training, um, which is why I was like, ah, whatever. Uh, okay, so right, I want to well, guess. We're still on tip two then. What do we got? What's the. Okay, I want to. Oh, pressure's on. I can't get two wrong in a row. All right, I want to. I want to go out and limp. I don't know if this is going to be on your list, but I'm just going to mm-hmm. risk it. Is competing on your list? Hundred percent, bro. Hundred percent. I should have gone with that. Compete, I should have gone with yeah. that. Compe- competing ah. is on the risk list. Yes, like yep. I. I think. I think competing is. You know, it's perhaps not the easiest thing on the list and it's not for everyone and you know no matter what some people will never do it but i th- mm. i'm someone who came from not particularly enjoying competing i used to compete mm. a lot just in sports when i was younger but i don't know i hit a particular age like when i was a teenager where i just didn't didn't enjoy competing as much uh but it's just so fundamental to your your improvement in jiu jitsu you get so much value out of participating in jujitsu at that intensity, maybe intensity is the wrong word, but in that like environment, like mm. that's what it's, that's what it's, it's meant for. And, you know, at the end of the day, it is a relatively like safe environment. You know, it shouldn't be as stressful as people make it out to be. And again, that's easier said than done. Like, you know, it feels like you're just telling someone who's, know stressed out to calm down and like you know it doesn't just calm down bro just chill right yeah because that always that always works right but you get what do they say some people say like one competition is worth a month on the mats or whatever whatever they want to say so i you say that and i regurgitated that in a vertical video i made recently something along those lines so i obviously there was more information in this vertical and i got very strong opinions in comments like people just flat out telling me i'm an idiot and competing like i had people literally say that um competing will do nothing to improve your jiu-jitsu or only harm you and and like get guarantee injuries and it's just ridiculous hyperbole um but yes yeah, some people are really passionately against competing don't think that it has any value or benefit at all and think it's a massive fucking waste of time that does remind me of that one guy who never ever com- competed and then just decided to sign up for the absolute division of Black Belt Worlds, demolished everyone, won, and then retired. So maybe, yeah, yeah, you know, maybe there is no value. Well, unfortunately, motherfuckers, there's it's the metric for measuring how good you are at the sport of jujitsu. I'm not saying that means you're the most knowledgeable person or whatever, you know, like famously John Denneher has never competed, right? Apparently, but mm. is, you know, known as the, the all wise, all knowing guru of the sport. Um, so again, it, I guess it depends on your goals, but if we're talking about the, the sport jujitsu, like I just, this doesn't make any sense. It's no different to someone saying like, you know, well, well, I mean, actually playing a game of tennis does nothing for you to make you better at tennis. You just need to train the tennis drills and do all the, you know, I've never played tennis as a sport, like, and know what it's like to train as a tennis player. But, you know, oh, you don't have to play tennis. It doesn't do anything to make you better at tennis. You just need to, it's fucking, it's just the most ridiculous mindset, man. Like, and I'm not, trying to shit on people who don't compete. There are people who, plenty of people who don't compete and will never compete who would still be savages at jiu-jitsu. A hundred percent. Like those people exist and there's probably a lot of them that exist. But I mean, in my experience, the people who can s- compete consistently 
improve far above and beyond the people who don't and at a much faster rate. Yeah. No, I agree. And I mean, like, I'd, I'd I agree. I, I've to... lived it. Like, I've, I fucking, I've lived it. I, I know exactly what it's like to go through a period where I don't compete for a while and then I compete and then I, I'm reminded, oh, yeah, this is why I do it. This is why it's so important. And I remember my, my perception, particularly if you've never competed, like, I don't care what fucking belt you are. If you've never competed at all and you train jiu-jitsu, like, you, you have to do it once. I, I can't even put into words the, the revelation that came with competing of before versus after. As in, bef- my, my perception of the sport before doing one competition versus what I thought about it after. It, it completely shifted, completely 180. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's so many sort of, like comparisons or uh, uh, analogies you could make to try to get that through to people. But I feel people who, who disagree with that are just, uh, I think you would struggle to get through to them. Yeah. You know, it would it'd be, I don't know. Made up, bro. I think that's like, I think for a lot of people and this may be controversial and you, I may piss off some people saying this, but I think a lot of people probably that adamantly disagree really passionately deep down, maybe, Maybe they think, maybe they know we're right. Maybe they know that, you know, they probably would get a lot of benefit from competing, but it scares them. So they attack it. You know what I mean? Like it, through their fear or through their anxiety about doing something that they don't want to do. Because a lot of people, it's, it, it is difficult, right? So they, they attack it. They attack the position. Yeah. I mean, but you got to give them credit where credit's due. I mean, they, they persevered and had the strength to, you know, type a comment on their keyboard, and that that, is that takes that takes That's courage. True. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I mean, I feel like it. I mean, it's kind of maybe similar to someone saying, "You don't need to surf in the ocean to get good at surfing. You can just surf in wave pools." And I'd be like, "Well, you could. You could get incredibly good at surfing by just surfing in wave pools." But it's like it's but not. But you'd be like, incredibly good at wave pool surfing. Yeah, like it's just not quite mm. the reality of like, like of the sport or the activity, you know, like mm. the you know the the wave pool is like a is a simulation of real surfing and training mm. in the gym is a simulation of of competitive jiu-jitsu. And I mean, I guess competitive jiu-jitsu is also a simulation or trickle-down simulation of um of MMA. And what I mean by that is I'll just slightly segue to when I was training with my, my friend in Miami recently and we we're just having a conversation. Like he's not that much older than me, but you know, like maybe half a generation older than me, definitely started jujitsu younger than me, started jujitsu back in like the earlier days in Rio and everything. And um, we we're just having a, you know, conversation like, oh, you know, have you stayed up to date with like the developing leg lock game? You know, do you prefer gi, no gi, those sort of things. Mm. You know, and and we kind of were having the conversation about do that we've had before, saying that the sport is starting to split between gi and no gi, and yes, they're to some degree interchangeable in terms of athletes. And yeah, the analogy I give for people familiar with the sports is rugby league and rugby union, two incredibly similar sports where one athlete mm. could more or less seamlessly to some degree go between the two and we're having that conversation and he was like and then that conversation led into like giving belts to people who never train in the gi and he he's of the mindset that he was like man like they're like you have to do both they're both the same thing and he was like man back in the day no gi was like was like valet tudo was the no rules like he was like you had to do he's like every week it was mandatory that if you trained in the gym, you had to do like the no gi class where you had gloves on and everything. And like like MMA was essentially then no gi was essentially MMA or combat jujitsu, if you will. Right mm. nowadays, like the sport combat jujitsu, and he was like, and you had to do it to train to be allowed to train in the gym. You had to do these essentially MMA rounds. So he was like, man, like the He's like, no, like you have to train in the gi, you have to train no gi, like, and even to the extent of like, you have to do some like striking stuff almost. But um, yeah. anyway, that's me. There's a bit of a tangent of saying that, yeah, 
I mean, training in the gym is a simulation of real competitive the sport of jiu-jitsu. The same way surfing in a wave pool is a simulation of surfing in the ocean. You could get super good only ever surfing in a wave pool. Of course you could. But you're also like, I mean, just be real about it. Yeah. So, yes, well, Kieran, competing was on the list. <laughs> All right. So, so we have yes. two. So, this is number three. <laughs> yeah. This is number All three. Right. So, currently I'm two. I'm, I'm one for two. Well, I don't know. I've, I've, I've had three guesses and I got two right. So, I'm two for three there. Yeah. Let's see if okay. you can get another right. one, number number three. All right. So, I have three, I have three left. Okay. Now, I'm going to say, <laughs> I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm not sure if this is actually on your list, but I've already failed. So, I'm, I'm you know. <laughs> I'm throwing caution to the wind here. Is studying in your own time on your list? No, but what a great tip. Mm. Great mm. fucking tip, yeah. Like, again... I had a feeling it wouldn't it, be. It's, it's, like, it's like Kieran just bringing up, like, analogies of, of mine that, like, it's just for making me remember analogies I've <laughs> given to, to describe these sort of things. Was that on your list? Yes. Yeah, I mean, no... <laughs> Yeah, so let's talk a little bit about that. Like studying is super, super key. It's uh, there's man, just like try to to get through to people like the difficulty of the sport. And I don't mean that as in to deter people because any you know to some degree anyone anyone can do it, but it's that most people who put like slightly above the average amount of effort into the sport like expect results, you know? And again, no different to anything else in life that if you actually like put some emotional effort into it, you expect results. And if you don't get it, like it hurts and it's disheartening and just, you know, feel unmotivated to try again. You feel like you failed in, in whatever it is. You could be trying to learn how to speak a second language. And if you like actually commit yourself and put above average effort in if if the results don't come you feel like shit and so i don't say it to dishearten people it's just to try to like get through to them the reality of the the difficulty of it and also just because of the the way that you typically train jiu-jitsu and what i mean by that is you know you you go to the gym and it doesn't matter whether you're training at a super casual gym where you're at the whim of whatever the instructor wants to teach or you're at some gym that has a super strict curriculum that they follow and you know that it's the third Tuesday of the month so you're learning whatever technique. Like if the only time you do jiu-jitsu is when you go to class, obviously you're limited to just working on whatever is happening in that class obviously different people are going to struggle with different things. And so I give the analogy of if you're a uni student and you want to, you know, pass your med your medical degree, if the only time you practice medicine, not as in like practices in on a patient, but I mean, practices in the, the art of learning the science. If the only time you do that is when you're at uni or at college, I don't think you're going to pass and get, and become a doctor, right? And then so you have to study in your own time and you have to study what you suck at. Like I I may suck at, I don't know, remembering the names of the bones in the body, but maybe Kieran's got that down pat and he sucks with, you know, the names of or how to diagnose respiratory infections or whatever. So he's going to be working on that, studying that. I'm going to be studying what I suck at. And so studying is super key if you want the the desired results that you're looking for yeah agreed yep but was on yep, my list. Was, right. but well it's on your list and it is a great a great so there's definitely by the end of the episode we've, we've gone over more than five things but yeah 100 percent. well, well, we'll I, stick I, gotta, with the, I gotta keep guessing i gotta keep we'll guessing stick bro. with the we'll <laughs> stick with the kieran guessing mind so we're still on <laughs> i mean we're, we're, i've got, I've got we've, two i think, so I think we've three. gone through four or five tips but yeah we're still yeah, on yeah. number okay. three so to speak i, I want to say this this has got to be on your list i i was going to guess it for the first guess as mm -hmm. like an easy one but you know i kept it in reserve you've got to have not just show up but be consistent Show up oh, consistently. Bro. It was the first one on there. It was yeah. the first one on there. Yeah, exactly. It's the yeah, first like, one on mine too. Mean, yeah, and I and I and I wrote, I wrote something, 
on my notes as as cliche as consistency is key or something like that. Yeah. But, but yeah, and that's. I mean, I think it's a bit of a no-brainer. It, it goes with any anything that you're trying to get better at. If you're not consistent, man. When I used to, <laughs> I used to be a bit like over the top consistent when I was younger, and the the sport or activity that I did when I was a teenager was skateboarding, and I was never good at it. Right, um, you know, for me the quite funny actually how last episode we were talking about injuries and you know quitting jujitsu the catalyst for me sort of quitting skateboarding was like I broke my wrist and by the time I you know got back into it it just kind of all fiddled out from there but when I used to skateboard and I used to skateboard every single day every day it was also I was younger and I had my friends were my neighbors were my friends and they also skated. So every day after school, we would go skating together. Um, and I used to have my list list, if you will, of tricks, like, you know, cause I was not good at it. I could maybe do, you know, in the beginning, whatever it was obviously no tricks, but the list, <laughs> excuse me, even by the time I quit, wasn't a long list. Let's call it 20 tricks, whatever. And every single day I had to do that one of that each trick once. Otherwise I thought I like wouldn't be able to do it the next day. Like I was like, (laughs) I have to. And sometimes that resulted in me spending forever, like into the late, late, late hours of of the day trying to land like a certain trick or something. And especially when you suck at it, it takes you forever. But that also reminds me of like when I did break my wrist actually, what I would do sometimes as well, if I was trying to learn, you know, a, a, a trick, maybe not a new one, but you're trying to do it on a new feature at a skate park or something. And in this particular case I was, and I would kind of not let myself like, um, have a drink, like stop for a rest or stop to have some water or something until I landed it. You know, that would be my reward for, you know, you just get so, you know, like you just get so aggressive about it. Like, nah, man, like, fuck, I've got, oh, I've got to learn this trick. It's so frustrated. And you like, no, I'm not having a drink till I learned it and whatever. And it was, I was probably, what was I? Yeah, 15 at the time. And can't remember if it was summer or not, but it was a, you know, a hot day. And then I had my shirt off skateboarding in this skate park. And I think I'd spent maybe about an hour trying to land this particular trick that um that I wasn't landing so I wasn't stopping to have a break wasn't stopping to drink any water or anything and then you know <laughs> the final attempt of this trick resulted in me in me breaking my wrist and breaking it quite visibly like it was super deformed broken <laughs> and then um, and then so that obviously luckily one of the friends I was with like I was 15 but luckily he was 17 which in in Australia he had his what we call our P's it's a license that you can drive right without um, an adult in the car so luckily the friend I was with had his P's so we could jump in the car and, and drive to the hospital but then as most people would know when you're going into surgery they don't let you drink water or anything and I had already been exercising for like hours in the sun without drinking water because I was trying to land this trick and I remember just the torture of waiting in the hospital for maybe like two in the afternoon until I didn't get it because I mean a broken wrist is pretty low on the you know on the emergency scale of emergency surgery from two in the afternoon till like I think it wasn't until like nine or ten o'clock at night that I had surgery and I was just so thirsty the whole time like Obviously, I was on morphine and stuff, but yeah, that was a struggle. Fuck, so you had to get surgery. Must have been bad. Dude, my wrist was like, my wrist was like, like it was a, it was a complete Z shape was my wrist. Like my, cause, cause if you imagine, I'm not going to show you through the camera because audio listeners will be, won't get it. But imagine if you just like slammed your palm like flush, like your palm into the ground and your whole hand just snapped up at the wrist. Ugh, so imagine the nice. whole, 
the whole wrist separates and your hand just moves up an inch and he's like up above your forearm. That's like how it was broken. So fuck it def- definitely right. required surgery. Yeah. But uh, anyway, be consistent. <laughs> <laughs> so that, yeah. we've got three thus far. I've, I've guessed uh, the first one was deliberate, deliberate, deliberate training. training. Then we had Com- competing, competing. Yep. And then, and then be we consistent. had consi- consistent. So then there's only, I've only got, I've only got two more for you to potentially Fuck. get. I don't know. Now Kieran's going to have to start thinking. Yeah. Are they easy or are they, do you think they I mean, I think once I say them, you'll be like, yeah, of course. That's a great tip. That's easy. Nah, that'll be shit. <laughs> I think there's, <laughs> I think the, I think I've probably got one on there that you'll never get. Never get. Okay. Not because oh. it, not because it's a bad tip. Actually, this might give it away. Just because I think it's a tip that you don't think I would say. Okay, I've got it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, your tip for getting better at jujitsu would have to be then, if I don't think you're going to say it, it's going to be something to do with strength, conditioning, and mobility. Something to do off, yeah, the, do the work off the mats. Something like that. Sort of, not not quite, but you like the same ballpark. I I had recovery, recovery, yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. which um, which is a great tip, but fuck, man, way easier said than done. Way easier said than done, and yeah. and I guess it depends at the extent that you're training, you know. But if you're training with purpose, with intention to get better, you're even with doing strength and conditioning and mobility, right? Like you could be doing all that stuff, ticking all the boxes. You still need recovery, right? Yeah, um, absolutely. And, you know, whether you're doing the S&C and mobility or not, right, is, is besides the point. You still need a bit of recovery in there. And, yeah, it's easier said than done because and it's something that it's probably the worst on my list of five. It's by far the thing that I'm the worst at, you know, because – um, you know, like if I'm outside of a training camp for a competition, I can be really lazy with my diet, you know, my mm. sleep's not that great for a lot of reasons out of my control and some for my control, you know, like, but then when it comes to recovery as well, like I still enjoy playing video games and I know lots of actually, a lot of competitors play video games, right? Like a lot as well. When, when I was in Brazil, that's, how they would that was what they would do in their downtime to relax and switch off because right? they spend so much time doing jujitsu and so much physical activity that then in their downtime you know they don't want to like they want to do something but they don't want to do anything i remember like in brazil and i you know my wife would be like oh we've got like the day off or the weekend off like let's say for argument's sake like Let's go hiking. I'll be like, God fucking no, bro. Like, I don't want to do anything. <laughs> like, you know, like there's no way. Um, but you know, obviously, if anyone listening plays video games, they would know how easily playing video games can turn into you going, Oh fuck, it's two in the morning, you know, like can quite easily happen. And so yes, recovery is important, but mm. definitely Definitely easier said than done. And I think even for a lot of people, that's the case because I was having a conversation with with Joey, actually, who Kira knows Joey, one of my black belts, and actually came into train tonight, who who almost never comes into train anymore because he lives really far away. But um, I was talking to him a while back saying that I'm just always tired. And I've had all, you know, blood tests or whatever, not to pursue the fatigue, but just as part of being an aging adult, you get tests and shit randomly done. And like, it's not like I have a thyroid issue or anything like that. And he was saying, well, you're probably not getting enough sleep. I said, ah, I think I'm getting enough sleep, you know, standard, whatever. And he was, and you know, but the reality is I go to sleep maybe, I mean, at the moment it's 1030 at night here. By the time we finish recording and, you know, whatever, you know, do my things, you know, brush my teeth, whatever. I mean, maybe I'm asleep by, let's say, midnight. Well, I'm going to be up at six, you know. Even if we weren't recording, I don't get home until quarter to ten at night. And, you know, so, like, at at best I'm asleep by 11.30, up at six. And he's like, yeah, you know, like, you're not getting enough sleep. I'm like, well, there's nothing else I can do about it, bro, unless I get rid of my toddler 
You know, like I can't sleep past six. And that's an option. Unless, yeah. And unless I leave my job, I can't get home, home before this time. And I think that's the case for a lot of people, right? Because yeah. re- recovery, particularly sleep, is definitely one of those things that it doesn't matter if you have Elon Musk money, there's no substitute for it, right? Like you can't substitute sleep. Mm. And um, it's quite interesting, right? Because they still, even the best, um, I don't know what the correct definition is for a scientist who studies sleep, you know, whether that's a, a neuroscientist, neurobiologist, I don't know what it is, but they still don't know. I mean, they don't know that much about the brain, right? In terms of, mm. you know, uh, what it can do. And sleep is another particular area that I know just from random documentaries and stuff that we actually don't know as much about it as people would think we do, but we know it's super important and there's no substitute for it. And I think for a lot of people, yeah, sleep is probably where a lot of people lose out, but they're not in it. They're, you know, the logistics of their life don't allow you to change it. Yeah. So I, funnily enough, I recently made a recovery course, um, recovery for jujitsu. It's on uh, the so I've got a platform coming out called BJJ Strong Online. Not a plug, but sort of. Um, and on that platform, there's there's a bunch of educational courses for like strength and conditioning, nutrition, um, cardio, all, all sorts of stuff. And one of the courses that I've, I just actually finished the other day is uh, the recovery course. And um, in that the the first chapter is called the three tiers of recovery and the, this is basically like if you do nothing else for recovery just do those three thi- these three things and the f- and this is based on on the science of of recovery and the first is sleep like you're right you need 7 to 9 hours of sleep opportunity each night and some studies suggest that athletes can do with 9 plus um now there is diminishing returns above 9 to a certain extent depending on who you're talking about but seven to nine hours of, of actual sleep uh, is, is what you need. So in order to get seven hours of sleep, you need to spend eight hours in bed because you lose about an hour each night of, of wake up. Uh, so it's th- that's the difference between sleep versus sleep opportunity. So you're saying that you're like going to bed, you're getting six hours in bed, right? That's six hours of sleep yeah, opportunity. Prob- yeah, so you're getting, so five, hours getting sleep. five hours of sleep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's it- if, you're, if your like sleep quality is pretty decent. Yeah, so I mean... Yeah, and and I, and I don't think I'm. <laughs> there's in no way am I unique in that, right? There's plenty no. of people. I mean, I only have one kid, right? Mm. There's people with multiple kids waking them up at whatever yeah. hours, and you know, um, or yeah, working people who work shift work and mm-hmm. but still but still want to train jujitsu and mm-hmm. get better at it, and so yeah, yeah, easier said easier said than done. Um, yeah. So the only sort of little um, sort of asterisks I would put then is if we're connecting the these sort of tips and you're like right i'm going to do a competition at least try to improve your recovery slash even if we're just talking about sleep try to improve your sleep during a a training camp for a competition Mm. You know, if you've yeah. got shift work, but you can like switch off the shitty shifts, like leading up to the competition, or if you've got you know, whatever it job, is. That, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, like, you know, if you're someone who plays, yeah, plays video games super late, just go, okay, for, well, for these, you know, two weeks, four weeks, six weeks, whatever it is leading up to the competition, nah, man, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to play mm. games past this time. I'm going to make sure I'm yeah. in bed at this time. Obviously, for some people, you won't have a choice. It's like, well, I, I can't change my job. I finish at this time. I get up at this time for yeah to make the pack the kids school lunches and whatever. But an yeah. important tip, but it's definitely for me at least the hardest one to actually do on my list. Yeah, the other two pillars of the oh of sorry yeah yeah yeah. In, in case you're curious, there's lots of other things in the in you know to, to recovery, but the other two most important. A nutrition, a um, bit obvious, and training intensity, commonly overlooked. So using uh, periodization, auto-regulation, deload phases, active rest, uh, and yeah, if you combine those three, your recovery will be a lot better. But there's also yeah. more, but yeah. Yeah, there, Yeah, I mean, there's obviously a lot, lot you can do. You can be do whatever, like 
ice baths, whatever. But yeah, nutrition is obviously super important. Um, yeah. And training intensity is a good ice point as well. Ice actually don't improve re- recovery as much as you would think. Um, there's actually a lot of, sorry, you just, I, I did really look into this uh, for this, this course that I developed. And the science behind ice baths is actually very mixed and, and gearing toward negative. The worst time to do an ice bath is actually immediately post-training. And what happens is it blunts your body's natural inflammatory response to your training. So after you do like a hard jiu-jitsu session, if you were to jump in an ice bath immediately after, it's probably one of the worst things you can do because not only are you stopping that uh, re- repair and recovery process after training, but there's also in the research, this it's suggested that your uh, down-regulating your muscle protein synthesis response as well. So not only are you reducing your immediate repair, you're also reducing your long-term repair from exercise. Yeah, it's, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if the ice bath, um, you know, phase or, or whatever you want to call it, continues no different to the constant back and forth between whether you should like ice an injury or not. Yeah. Because yeah, you, know, exactly. you, you, you ask, you ask your physio, should you ice it? They'll tell you to ice it. A week yeah. later, they'll tell you to put a heat pack no. because a yeah. new paper came out. Like, and then a week yeah. later, a paper comes out saying, no, ice it. It just goes back yeah. and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Yeah. Cold but, plungers um, can but, be good for other reasons though. They, and the only thing is like immediately post exercise long like long soaks in an ice bath is a no-go so you can still do them uh if, if it subjectively improves your recovery because it has been researched to show that it um it especially when you do it with heat therapy uh it can increase blood flow to to the area and that can promote recovery but do not do it immediately post exercise that's the only only caveat so you can do them just not immediately post and yeah and then your third point training intensity is a great point as mm. well because yeah, like if you're doing, if you're a professional athlete, jiu-jitsu athlete, and you're doing 10, 12 sessions a, a week of jiu-jitsu, mm. not every single one of those is super hard competition training yeah. rolling. Like like you can't, your body can't handle it, you know. Yeah. And even if your body can handle it, the it's just like such a, I mean, not such a high risk of injury, but to some extent an unnecessary risk of injury. And then at mm-hmm. the same time, even if your body could handle it, even if you were, you know, immune to injury, well, then where are you leaving the time to to work on the more nuanced theoretical drill your technique side of jiu-jitsu? Mm, exactly. So, yeah, like training intensity is super important as well. All I mean, right, Kieran, shall- goes, Kieran goes ham all the time, though. That's easy to go yeah. once. One, one speed, One Kieran. speed, one speed. Ah. One speed. <laughs> uh, I, do, um, I do have one speed. But I mean, I like to fucking roll properly. I don't like fuck around rolls. I don't know. I don't like it's rolls like where you're like having a chat. You know what I mean? Like halfway no, no. through. I mean, sometimes they're okay. Like depending on what you're doing. But like, I don't know. Well, I like, like, I like shut proper the rolls. Fuck up. Yeah, I like proper rolls. I don't know. I don't like being an asshole or whatever, but just whatever. Yeah. Anyway, the you're last there, one. You're there to train. Yeah, let's go. Let's yeah. see. Where's one more tip? To s- Wait, no, one. One more, yeah. Yes, or sorry. Four. One more yeah. tip that's on my list anyway. So I've gotten four out of six guesses, I think. Yeah. Yes, I okay. think so. I'm not Stop sure if you'll get this last one, but you won't. But for sure you'll agree with it, but I'm not sure if I, you I just, it. I'll just have to go out on a limb and say drillers make killers. Uh, no, but the, I mean, Damn. maybe. I guess you could say it's sort of connected. And I. Specific training? No, more that I just, again, a lot of these tips are no different to tips that you could apply to any any skill you're trying to acquire. So then the other one I had that is, yeah, again, more applicable to, I guess, if you were, you know, newer to the sport, which is making sure that you invest the time to build a strong, you know, platform, a strong foundation of jujitsu to then build upon, right? Like it's, it's super, again, it's like any skill acquisition, right? You have to have a good base layer to build upon. And for sure, there'll be some people that disagree with it. Like there's people who think they disagree with whatever, whatever. Mm. But I think the majority of the population would agree that in any skill acquisition, you want to have a good 
fundamental understanding and uh, knowledge of a particular area to then build upon. Mm. And yeah. so this is again, yeah, more targeted to the, to, to newer. Well, actually no, now that I think about it, not even newer belts because you don't have to go back too far that even black belts were thrown into a situation of being like, well, fuck bro. I better learn what this whole like leg lock game is about. Yep. But so even if you just took that individual area of the sport and said, okay, I need to build up a good, like fundamental understanding of leg entanglements and leg locks. And then I can start to dive deep from that, whether it's in defense or offense or breaking yeah. mechanics or whatever it is. So <laughs> Maybe this is more directed to the the zero stripe white belt that comes up to me on his third class and he's like, Can you teach me a buggy choke? And I'm like, I can, but I don't know if it's the most applicable thing for you right now. Well, I mean, you are spending a lot of time in psychotrol on the bottom, but <laughs> but um, you know, maybe there's some let's build the the foundation first. Yeah. So I guess you could tie that into drillers or killers, if you will. Ah, well, I wouldn't give myself. Uh, yeah, it's oh, a uh, I'll give, nah, I'll give, nah, uh, nah, nah, I'll nah, give nah. it to you. Nah, nah. And um, no, that's good. That's good advice. And I'll I'll yeah. say as well for the for the. I've said this before, but for for people who yeah are even newer, so let's say, two stripe white belt and below for a trivial sort of number the advice I always give to my students who are in that sort of white belt stage of feeling like they're starting to get it, but then as a result of starting to get it being like, I have no idea what's going on. Almost that sort of cliche, the more, you know, the less, you know, sort of yeah. they're starting to right, but they feel so lost and overwhelmed because they're starting to get it and they're starting mm. to realize how big it is. And I say, and I said this recently to shout out to my student, Sammy, he just competed on the weekend yesterday. Didn't get the re result he wanted. He did go into the comp with an injured rib, unfortunately, but yeah. um, have, have was Sammy here before you left redhead Sammy. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So, um, but yeah. And I, I said to him, the advice I give to a lot of people at his current position in jujitsu so here we go again. I go, there's five basic positions. Yeah, Kieran's like, oh my <laughs> God, how many times do I have let to me, hear this? Let me teach this. There's yeah. five basic positions in jiu-jitsu. You need to make sure that you know two moves in each of the five basic positions, both top and bottom. Therefore, you have a total of 20 moves to learn and get good at. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't put it down to 10 moves, so I'm asking half of you what you Kieran is asking. You, no, yeah. no, no, you're original. You've gotten soft over the years, old man, because your original <laughs> was two. You told yeah, me two. <laughs> you know, so Kieran One is either... Per position? This is bullshit. <laughs> Kieran, is, Kieran is either right or I decided to make it twice as hard for him. I can't remember. But yeah, exactly exa exactly what Kieran said, right? Like, And... And again, and again the, the reason Kieran's hearing this for the millionth time, but we have to repeat it, is because we were having a conversation the other day where we were talking about we have a bad habit of just assuming that listeners have listened to every single one of our episodes, which obviously is ridiculous. Yeah. So we'll say something like, oh, we've said this before or like this or that. And, pe and then people will comment, I have no idea what you're talking about. This yeah. is only the second episode I've listened to. So yeah, but the... Five basic techniques, uh, unfortunately ignoring stand-up for now, but close guard, half guard, side control, mount, back control. Each position has a top and bottom. You know, if you're a one-stripe, two-stripe white belt listening to this and I ask you, can you show me one from each of those positions? You know, so that, yeah, so that is only 10 techniques. Mm. Can you show me one technique from close guard top, one from close guard bottom, one from half guard top, one from half. I don't care what the technique is. Could be a submission, a sweep, a guard recovery. Uh, I don't care. Show me a technique. If you can tick those boxes, then hopefully you're not going to be completely lost and overwhelmed. You'll find, yeah. yeah, there's everyone knows there's more than those positions, but they're the bare bones positions. You mm. won't find yourself going, I have no idea what to do. You'll know mm -hmm. what to do, may not be able to execute it, but you'll, you'll know what to do. And it's a, it's yeah. a good stepping stone if you're in that initial. I'm starting to get it, which means, oh my God, what the fuck's happening? I don't know what to do. 
Yeah. The, it's the Dunning-Kruger effect where the more you learn about a, a, a subject, the more you realize you don't know. So it's it's like, and, and the effect is uh, expands where in the beginning, the beginners think they know way more than they do. And then they have that realization moment where they're like, holy shit, I know nothing. That's, yeah. the, that's the classic Dunning-Kruger effect. Um, yeah, really interesting. Yeah. So, so they were my five. Yeah. Some, some I had that you had. I want to hear what, yours in order. What was the so, order? Oh, well, so the, the way that I had written them in order was I had written, um, you know, consistency as number one. I had written build strong fundamentals as number two, yep. deliberate training, yep. compete, recovery. That's, that's an excellent way of ordering it. I yeah. almost, instead of recovery, just wrote repeat. <laughs> <laughs> but, but but yeah um you know and Back they're the probably start, yeah. as well in order for me yeah coincidentally well, probably ranked in in easiest to hardest yeah you know only competing because well, it's just never been my jam although i've done it all through my belts but yeah recovery i struggle with for sure no that makes sense though because like you need to show up consistently for all of it to work right if you're not showing yeah. up to jujitsu everything else is irrelevant so and then I feel know. like as well deliberate training is a little bit irrelevant if you haven't already don't have a foundation a, str- a strong exactly. foundation you know exactly. you can't yep. like you go, oh I'm going to spend the next yeah three months working on buggy chokes and you're like and you, you don't know, even like, know how to get out of side control yeah yeah, yeah. Or, or like yeah you don't bro you don't even know how to something you don't even know how to open someone's closed guard or you yeah. don't even know how yeah. to let, let's forget about hitting a double leg. You don't even know what a double leg is. Like, you mm. know where, like, why are you learning a buggy choke? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, like, you can't. And then, if you're not deliberate training, I'm not saying that doesn't mean you can't compete, but it's definitely something you should be doing if, if, if you're going to compete. And then, yeah, recovery. I mean, you can put recovery at number one. It's super important. Well, mine's, mine's really interesting uh, in terms of comparing, comparing to yours. If I was to, like, if, read out my order it's show up slash be consistent mm-hmm. intentional training which is mm-hmm. deliberate training uh study slash take notes um do the work off the mats and compete yeah so very i mean they're very similar like yeah mm. there's none of those are disagreeable and you could list no. another hundred tips that are gonna improve your drink that at least one glass of water <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah, you could, yeah, you could do five tips just on improving your nutrition for jujitsu or whatever. Yep. Like so, so. Funny so you mentioned that one, Adam. <laughs> huge, if you go to YouTube dot com forward slash Kieran Lefev. Actually, you did have a new YouTube video come out today. I did. Um, remind me the title. It is called Jiu-Jitsu Anatomy, the science of breaking limbs and how to fix them. Yeah, so plug for Kieran. If you uh, want to break limbs and then put them back together, it's like Lego, yeah. but Kieran will teach you how to do it. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's a collaboration video I did with a uh, physiotherapist out of Bondi Junction. Um, Physio K is the name of the, the studio, and Kenny is the guy that, uh, that runs it. And um, I showed up to his office with a camera unannounced and said, Hey, what do you know about limbs? Um, no, it was, it was fully planned out. And, and, you know, we, we worked together on the script for months and we spent like a full day filming it and, uh, yeah, uh, edited, edited it over, you know, many, many months and put it together and yeah. Well, guys, it's a good video. Keep, fucking keep watch it. Of, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Go to Kieran's YouTube. Give me a fucking that medal. Shit. <laughs> I'll say it so you don't have to, you know, Subscribe, like, comment, or whatever order people say. Ring that. the bell. Yeah, and ring the and notification bell. And give me a super like. Pay me money. Yeah. <laughs> is that <laughs> a thing now? Is, <laughs> is, yeah. is a super like a thing? Yeah, you got to. Oh, <laughs> you have to um, have a certain amount. Of, I think you have to have ten thousand subscribers to unlock it, and it's a super thank. It's called a super thanks, and it's so funny. Sometimes what does that do? YouTubers what does that? What does that pays, do? It just pays you money. It's just a tip. It's literally oh, a tip. Right. No, okay. Right. Yeah. You, you hit the button, um, so sh- show support with a super thanks, and then it's literally like giving someone money. Um, yeah, right. I've gotten a super thanks before on one of my vertical videos. I was super, super Ooh. shocked. Um, and it's funny when you see... <laughs> this dude's like, fuck. <laughs> 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 Press the wrong button. 
<laughs> I accidentally gave you my rent money. Uh, can I have the back? No, um, it is super funny when YouTubers ask for, and if you really like this video, show support with a super thanks. People type in the comments, super thanks, thumbs up. <laughs> it's like, you fucking idiots. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking assholes. Oh my god, I love that. I it is all... so good. <laughs> oh my god, that is that is awesome. That is, that, oh, I love that joke. Okay. <sighs> anyway, all right. So let <laughs> let's go on to um something interesting today I learned mm. so and so. Um I'm going to give my little something interesting that is do not come to me as a source of information <laughs> on this topic. <laughs> I'm just sharing the very little I know for people who perhaps know less than I. Which You're going to is... talk about soccer again? <laughs> <laughs> There's this ball, right? I think they call it a ball. There's this round thing. <laughs> no. Um, so last week was the there was a competition, which if you were like me, I was kind of like, the fuck is this competition and where did it come from? Which is the Aiga Aiga competition, the Almaty International Grappling Association. If people, I'm sure there's people listening to this who know everything about it. There's probably some people who know half half, which is already more than me. I am mm. purely addressing the people who know absolutely nothing because this competition had massive names in it. It had like Dante Leon, it had Fabrizio Andre, it had uh, Jean Carlo Bordoni, Isaac Mitchell, Joseph Chen, had I think Gabriel Souza, had massive, massive names in this competition. Um, so it is worth knowing who it is. So, what this competition is, is an, a team competition. There were four teams, right, of seven athletes in each team, right? And the teams fight and how you win is essentially the team that wins four of those seven matches. So it's really, I mean, of course, the individual performance matters, but, um, you know, just because you're Gordon Ryan doesn't mean you're going to progress to the next round because if your teammates don't win their matches too, like tough shit, it's a, you know, it's a team competition. And yeah, so there were four teams, right, the, that fight, but, the rules are quite interesting. The rules are more or less very similar to ADCC rules, but it's actually three five-minute rounds. So it also is kind of, so it's, let's call it for argument's sake, in between a jiu-jitsu match and an MMA match in terms of how the rounds work. But at any point in those three five-minute rounds, it is also like an MMA bout that in the sense that once you get a submission, you get a submission in round one, the match is over, right? You don't do round two and round three. That's a knockout. And similar to MMA and boxing, the points, which the point system is very similar to ADCC, they reset after each round so they don't accumulate. So the same way that, you know, it kind of doesn't matter how much you demolish a round in boxing, like it can only be scored like whatever it is, like 10-8 or 10-9 or whatnot. You can't, and that doesn't carry over into round two. Like it's a clean slate for round two. So the scoring worked like that as well. Yeah, so that happened on the weekend. And then I believe the next one is towards the end of the year. But yeah, they're trying the, the 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 caveat for this, where it came from, or the marketing plug, if you will, was, are uh, you know, are uh, ADCC grapplers really the best, you know, submission grapplers in the world? You know, the Dagestani wrestlers don't think so. Blah blah blah, because there was like a team Khabib as well, which was a bunch of dudes whose names I can't pronounce. Um, it was Sambo versus Jiu Jitsu, right? <laughs> yeah, I guess you could plug it as that. I believe, I didn't watch it. It is free on YouTube for anyone who wants to watch it. You know, it's over two days. So each YouTube video is hours long. There's heaps of sick jujitsu in it. So, I mean, if you're someone who just froths on watching jujitsu, you probably already watched it. But, you know, if not, you know, there's heaps of sick jujitsu. Man, there is the sickest little reel on flow grappling. Um... Oh, for Benicio Andre, who I, th I don't want to know if he, when I say lost his match, right? Because 
I'm not sure if it was him just not having his hand raised at the end of one of the rounds or at the end of the match, or was it his match in the quarterfinals or the semifinals, or I'm not really sure. But he lost the match, but there was this sick exchange, which, Kieran, you'll have to, I'll make you watch once we finish this recording, of him, like, sprawling slash, like, jumping over his opponent in turtle round to the back, and, man... I think so I saw slick. This. Yeah, so fast. It's only like a few posts back on flow grappling. But yeah. That's um that's the Aiga competition that, you know, will um maybe take over I don't know, maybe not take over ADCC necessarily, but like it obviously has a lot of money behind it because mm-hmm. for there was Team Modolfo, which was the team mounted by Mo from ADCC. Mm. And um, and he he mounted his team of ADCC guys, which is the team that had Giancarlo Bordoni and like all those fucking dudes on it. Uh, so, I, like, I tried to do more research into finding out, like, okay, but these teams, like, who fucking creates them? Like, mm. Team Al Leon or whatever. Like, who the fuck is that? And can anyone be on? Like, who chooses who goes on the teams and whatever? There's obviously money behind it because for Mo to go in, but you know they're from a business point of view, probably also not threatened by them in terms of dethroning ADCC. Otherwise flow grappling wouldn't have covered it because flow grappling and ADCC have agreements and whatever. So I'm a bit lost as to how it comes together. So like I said, I'm not like the dude to come to the Mm -hmm. information on this. I'm just wanting to give some information for anyone who like I spoke to a black belt today who was like, what is, I have zero idea what this is. What the, mm. Iiga, Iiga, what are you even talking about? I just gave it the tiniest little bit of information for people who knew nothing. You now know slightly less than nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> that was my, yep. And but if anyone Troy wants Bar-tree. to, bro, well. D- 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 Dante Leon hit the yep. sickest Troy Bar. And it's yep. pretty much. I'm looking at people, it right now. If people who are listening to this moment listen to episode 145 where I talked about Troy Bars, that is pretty oh, exactly much the, the, same. the yeah. exact same entry yeah. that I that I was doing during my months of deliberate training. Yeah. Where it was sick, right? It was a sick That's Troy Bar clean, entry. Man. That's fucking clean. You know, I've, also, I've noticed ever since you, you, you know, we've been talking about Troy Bars and, you know, I get a hard on for Troy Bars. I've been seeing them everywhere. I fucking see them everywhere now. Like they're, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it is. It's like, what's that effect where you think about where like, you, have you ever, have you ever had that experience where you're like looking at cars to buy and you look at a particular type of car and you're like, Oh, I haven't, I've only seen too many and of those. And then you see it fucking everywhere because like yeah, yeah, you, yeah. you start to notice it. It's, it's not that you see more of them. It's, it's that your brain is, is looking for them. Yeah, um, it's yeah, the same, yeah. it's the same with Joy Bars for me. I've just fucking seen them everywhere and so yeah. much competition footage. But yeah, there, but there was definitely some sick jujitsu at the event. Um, I mean, yeah, really, really good grappling. W- worth a watch for people who have the time. But that was my little tidbit. Okay, well, fuck. I should have gone first because mine's shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, didn't think, um, I, I, I gave the most <laughs> minimal amount of information on the subject. Yeah, like, and, pro- and, my shit. <laughs> and probably mispronounced everything. So the bar's pretty low, bro. Okay, so <laughs> elephants, right? <laughs> <laughs> no um well i uh i was thinking like something interesting like something maybe a little bit off topic it's it's not really jiu related at all um i have two sort of things like two shitty things to combine into one that's like a possible <laughs> to one bi- one bigger piece of shit um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one yes. is a turd and one is a bit of glitter but we've got to roll it okay so um i just okay fuck it i'll just do it um So, mine is two podcast recommendations. Uh, One is a a podcast that I really like and be listening to a while. And another one is a brand new sort of, not a podcast like we do. It's like a legit podcast is in. It's like fully produced. (laughs) (laughs) It's actually good. Um, And you should stop this right now. Listen to that instead. No, but... um, this is like a, it's a series, so it's not a, it, but it's a one-off series. It's kind of like a, an audio f- show, you know what I mean? Instead of a documentary, they produced a uh, podcast instead. And uh, it's a seven-chapter uh, series, and it's called The Witch Trials of J.K. Rowling. Now, 
if just we're not a political podcast and I'm not going to get into like my opinions or, or, or what have you. Um, but it's, it's about the controversy around JK Rowling's, um, apparently transphobic comments that she's made over the years, but it's not supporting JK Rowling and it's not like vilifying her. It's taking a very, um, neutral, nuanced mid middle ground view and take on the whole situation. And it also talks a lot about like, you know, that, that issue and, and, uh, you know, the culture surrounding it. And I just found it fucking interesting because like, you hear a lot about this sort of issue in the media these days, and it is a, a hot controversial social topic. And I don't know anything about it. I'm a fucking meathead. I, I don't know shit. I don't really, you know, I only know what I see on social media and that's like, you know, not a fucking lot. So it was really interesting to, to learn more about, you know, the exact, both, both sides on the, on the argument. Ooh. And yeah, I just, I think it's really, really well produced. Um, there are like hour long episodes, and yeah. What was it called again? It's so called the the Witch Trials of J.K. Rowling. Witch Trials of J.K. Rowling. Nice. Yeah, it's, it's quite good. Um, and no, I like the, I like I like podcast shout outs because obviously if people are listening to this, they listen to podcasts. So yeah, we can and right up I there. I had alley. to. I had to shout out the podcast where I got the recommendation from, uh, and that's a podcast that you know. Ev- Lots of people are probably familiar with, uh, and it's called Making Sense with Sam Harris. Uh, Sam Harris is an int- intellectual, and uh, he's famous for uh, his meditation app. Um, he does, yeah, he, he's really big into meditation, but he's also like a, a social uh, commentator, and yeah, he's he's, he's brilliant. So um, I find he's, you know, he does talk about politics a little bit, but only like as a commentary. Uh, point of view. I think he's actually trained as a neuroscientist and he's also a philosopher. So very, very interesting. Check it out if you're into that sort of shit. Um, so that was the first part and maybe I could just leave it there, but fuck it. I want to talk about <laughs> he, he <laughs> was like, I'm going to, I'm going to double I'm down. Gonna, yeah. I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep digging. Um, I thought that was okay, but I want to talk about this, this live event that I, that I went to. Um, well, I watched live event uh, of jujitsu. No. <laughs> oh, okay. So a, a, an online, an online live event event that was uh, on Saturday. Uh, yeah, Saturday. Did or I like... invite you to that stream, you cheeky dog? <laughs> <laughs> Good performance, Adam. <laughs> that rear naked. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Uh, so for the uh, Aussie listeners, it would have been like Sunday night, one in the morning. But it was it was Saturday afternoon for European time and Saturday morning, midday for US. Um, and some of our listeners may be familiar with this guy because he's pretty famous, uh, very popular on social media. His name's Alex Hormozzi. He's a business guy um, who wrote a... He releases heaps of free content, uh, owns a company called Acquisition.com and and wrote a very popular book called uh, $100 Million Offers. And uh, he, he's exploded on social media over the last 12 months or even two years and he's got millions of followers, blah, blah, blah. He did this live event to announce the launch of his latest book, right? Sorry, and sorry. What was, what was his name again? Alex Hormozzi. H-O-R-M-O-Z-I. Hormozzi. Yeah. And he has a new book that just launched, and I, you know, registered for the 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 live event um, uh, weeks ago, right? And he's got this new book, and it's got hundred million dollar leads. If you're into biz- business, check it out. I haven't read it yet, but I'm, I'm sure it's brilliant. Anyway, back to the point. I I jump on this live event. I was a little bit late because I fucked up the time zone conversion, so I was about you know twenty minutes late into the the live event. I thought I was going to be ten minutes early, and I get in, and he's halfway through doing this thing where he's. It looks like. He's selling a course, right? And if you know Alex, you know that he's big on, hey, I don't have anything to sell you. His, his whole thing is, you know, he's he's super fucking rich from running businesses and that's how he makes money. So he's not trying to profit from his audience. He does it, you know, I don't know why the fuck he does it to whatever. Um, and the whole thing he was like going through, it was like I was watching an infomercial. It's like I was watching a fucking like snake oil salesman selling a trying to hock off his um his business course and there was 200,000 people in the Zoom live and people were smashing in the and, comments and, and you log, you logged in and he was like you're late 
<laughs> <laughs> and he brings up my get my my fucking uh video i'm like oh shit i got my dick in my hand i'm like oh anyway <laughs> uh no 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 so i'll buy it <laughs> yeah and it, he's like doing this you know he's doing classic sales tactics like this is valued at not only do you get this but you also get this and this is valued at over twelve thousand dollars value but i should you know if i charged you per hour of, of my time to learn all this it would cost you millions and you'll earn all your money back just with one application one one month of applying these tactics and then he was like look at this person they applied this and they made this much money he was it was yeah, like i was like super you mother- oh my god yeah and i was like you motherfucker alex i was so mad i was like i can't believe this i can't believe i'm i'm spending like my saturday i waited weeks for this and you're trying to sell me your fucking course and then he goes and then at the end he goes this is this this package that he was selling right this course package and he's like it's valued at twelve thousand dollars but i'm not going to sell it to you for twelve thousand i'm going to sell it to you for five thousand, <laughs> oh, really? like, motherfucker! And then, and then he's like, oh, really? and then he, and then he would like go, uh, go on and sell it, like you know, talk about other elements of it. And he's like, I'm not gonna sell it to you for five thousand. It's price at only two, two and a half thousand. And that's that's a that's a steal, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, you motherfucker! And then he's like, <laughs> but I'm not gonna sell you for two and a half thousand. It's free. And then he's just like, pauses. Uh, yeah, and yeah, everyone's yeah. like, oh my God, what the fuck? But um, I, I just wanted to tell the story because I was sitting there because I came in halfway through. I didn't really get any context. And I was like hating on this guy. I was like, you motherfucker, you tricked us all into trying to sell you shit. You don't even need this money. Like, what what are you doing here? And then it's, it's completely free. And uh, I thought yeah, it right. was a genius, genius way of, I think he let it go on a bit too long because he was doing the... You know, he's trying to show the real value of it, right? Because when you give shit for free, and I, I've found this in, in, in business myself, when you give out things for free, even if they're super, super valuable and they're, you know, worth a lot and you could charge money for them, because they're free, people associate no value to it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. People don't value it. Like, that's why I, <laughs> I don't do um, free programs for people it, anymore. Because it literally didn't cost them anything. Exactly. There's no skin in the game. Like I have a rule now and I've learned this, you know, this rule has been enforced for many years, but I always break it that I don't do free programs for people. I don't do free uh, strength and conditioning or nutrition programs for people. And I keep my friend or whatever, because I found time and time and time again, every single person almost without fail that I spend time and do a full free program for whether they're family or or like a, a friend of a friend or best friend or whatever all of them are like oh thanks so much and they never ever follow through with it and that's not because my programming shit <laughs> yeah yeah it's, yeah it's because they don't they don't have value in it they, it didn't cost them anything and in their mind they think it didn't cost me anything which it's wrong because it, it costs my time and expertise and you're literally getting you know a free product you wouldn't go to a plumber like if if your if your mate was like a i don't know a fucking uh carpenter or something you wouldn't like get them to build you a house for free you know what i mean it's it, i don't know yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. maybe you would but i wouldn't I'd um, buy him a case of beer be all right <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's the thing. And they just, you know, people people don't value it. So, back to Alex, he he probably recognized that that if he just, you know, backhanded like off offhandedly be like, "Oh yeah, everyone you get access to free course or or all this free material, right, that I produce for you because you showed up to this live event and you've supported me and you, you know, you're probably going to buy my book or whatever." Um then people would be like, "Ah, eh, cool." But he, he sold it in such a way that he was like, hey, I could sell this for five grand. I could sell this for 12 grand. I could sell this for easily, uh, you know, over a thousand dollars. And you would make your money back if you actually saw the value in it and followed through with it. But, you know, it's going to cost you money. And, and then at the end, he's like, it's free. And I, I just thought it was fucking genius. And um, yeah, it was really cool. Yeah, right. And so you got your free little course and... Got your book Mate, and off you go. My free twelve thousand dollar course, right? Yeah, <laughs> value yeah, twelve ninety nine. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I bought is his. This, I bought his book. Is, is is this where you're? Is this now where you're like? And for all the Beyond Jiu Jitsu listeners, I'm not going to sell it to you for twelve thousand. I'm not going to sell it to you for five thousand. It is just two thousand dollars, and I'll give you my login. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, sick. Yeah. Oh man, it's uh, really cool. That was probably well, well, very well. uninteresting. <laughs> no, no, no. It was interesting. And I also, no, it was fine. And I, and I will always like little podcast plugs and, you know, and yeah, there's something interesting doesn't have to be necessarily jujitsu related. And for a lot <laughs> you of people, uh, something interesting doesn't have to be interesting. <laughs> no, no, no. You know, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't have to be jujitsu related. And yeah. I'm sure plenty of people will be super keen to listen to that podcast or 
you know, look more into Alex and whatnot. So, yeah. yeah. I but, have um, heard feedback from people, just quickly, that they don't even listen to us for jiu-jitsu. They actually yeah, don't saying. even like when we talk about jiu-jitsu. They, they just listen for, for a bit of banter and a bit of, bit of shit talk. So it's funny when we get people come into the, you know, their whatever, like, like the comment we spoke about where they're like, the guy was like, oh, these guys aren't even talking about anything. It's, and it was an episode where we were. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just funny when we get that, uh, you know, we're never going to be, we're never going to be a podcast where you sit down, get your notebook out and fucking, you know, you know, fucking get a PhD out of. Um, there's plenty of podcasts out there like that. Um, and I think there are this limitations. This ain't one of them. This ain't fucking one of them. 50% of this podcast can't read. So... <laughs> 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 Wait, the host or the listeners? <laughs> no. <laughs> All I'll say is thank God Alex's book is audio. I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. no, yeah. no, yeah. I mean, it's kind, it's kind of our thing. We'd like to, yeah, like to keep if it anything, pretty li- light and breezy. I would say, if anything, you probably get dumber listening to this podcast. Rather, you'd probably get yep. worse at jujitsu. Yep, it's a, it's a solid yes. It's a solid yes. <laughs> yeah, I'd say so. <laughs> but um yeah with that guys uh thank you so much for listening another reminder that uh it's only three episodes away so for us it's probably only by the time you listen to this if you, two weeks away if from that. when we record um episode 150 which is our next q a uh we did get a couple of messages of people sending through questions and then i replied saying guys submit the audio question which they sent back a little thumbs up. So I assume they're going to get to that. But yes, please send your audio questions through. We'll play them on the episode and then answer them. Anything can be jujitsu related, can be, you know, strength and conditioning, nutrition, or even just, you know, some of the funnier questions we've got, I've quite enjoyed. What we, One of yeah. them was, you know, like who would win in a fight, like a gorilla or a polar bear or something. And then Kieran and I are debating that. So send through oh, my whatever My favorite you want. is the 10-10-year-olds the ten, ten one. Could you beat 10-10-year-olds oh, in a fight? Yeah, that's right. That went down a rabbit hole. Yeah. So I fucking love that one. That's wh- good. Whatever you want to send through, guys, and uh, hopefully we can get to them all. But yes, once again, thank you so much for listening, and we'll catch you on the next one. 